back, everyone. You are listening to Rhode Island Red Radio here on 990 WBOB.com, and I am your host, Alan Gerberti. Uh, so last Friday, I had the opportunity to speak with Thomas Banks, the author of Indefensible. Now, it is a work of fiction, but it tells the story of a possible high-tech terrorism weaponizing autonomous drones, and it does make you think. So uh, let's let's get right to the interview. Uh, quickly, what is, what, what is the premise of, uh, I guess, the, the book and the story? Well, in its, in the simplest sense, it's about the use of drones, pretty much off-the-shelf drones, weaponized with explosives and biologics in the hands of embedded terrorists, and all of which don't know who each other is, and they're being controlled by a mastermind out in the Mideast, Mokhtar Barakat, who is, uh, who is dispatching these people randomly uh, to, to attack uh, selected targets and because of the nature of the drones, because they're small and fast and agile and relatively invisible, uh, that's where the, the title of the book came from, Indefensible. All right. So the late, late, lately, there was uh, actually in December uh, in, let's say, the, in uh, the UK, they had an airport that was shut down. And then more recently here in New Jersey, uh, we had right. because of uh, drone sightings. That's correct. And they, uh, for a while, they were saying they have uh, like technology. They have trucks uh, that can dis- that can uh, disable these, or, or guns that can either catch them or disrupt the signals. But apparently, it's not really that effective, or it's no, kind it's, of more limited, I guess. It's not working. The we saw Gatwick get shut down for the weekend, and the people that they thought had perform the, de- the dastardly deed of, of deploying a drone over the airport. When they got to this old couple at their home, finally, they weren't the ones that did it. And also, uh, you know, Heathrow was shut down for a day. This is, the reality is that the technology to repel this, this marauder doesn't really exist. I don't care whether you're taking shotguns out of your out of your back out of the back of your car or using some sort of radio beam bomber that there is no technology that exists to repel these and that presumes in most cases that they're radio controlled like like your model airplane radio controllers which are using radio frequencies to guide them Modern day drones are autonomous. They are driven by GPS coordination. There's nobody talking to them. Bob Johnson simply says, go blow up, uh, you know, some, 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 a baseball stadium, clicks on the screen and the, and the unit operates autonomously. Right. Right. And, and there's, yeah, so there's no signal to be disrupted and uh, no one to catch. Right. And if, if you imagine for a moment, that if you if you scribed a ten mile radius around a target, there's a lot of square miles inside of a ten mile radius. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Yep. And if and if you and if you dispatch ten ten uh, embedded terrorists randomly throughout that that circle, and they all release their drones simultaneously, and these ten drones track to the to the location that they're targeting from 10 different 10 different origins how would you prepare yourself for that that there wouldn't be a way no th- there is no way yeah. the it, it it is a it is a frightening technology and, and as i depict in the in the in the book indefensible everything is tried from uh turning off gps in both Russian and American GPS, and that failed because the drones in my novel also used inertial navigation, image mapping. You know, uh, how do you how do you protect against that? Right, right. Smart drones. Yeah, these uh, Stephen Hawking. It's on the it's on the back cover of my book. Said about a couple of years ago before he died, the biggest risk we face as man and mankind is autonomous weapon systems. They're going to become the collision of cough of the of tomorrow, meaning cheap, affordable, and available and reliable. Right. I mean, one of the um, 
other things, I mean, I, I had thought when I when I had seen this, I was like, well, what about our, you know, because we're going to uh, towards like autonomous cars as well. Right. I mean, you know, and the other thing is, uh, and you had mentioned like in your book, it doesn't have to be, you know, an explosive. It uh, They used ricin. Right. And the the effects of things like ricin, and if you remember the, the TV show Breaking Bad, where where he kills his, his arch nemesis with a little tiny bit of ricin, mm -hmm. 1.8 milligrams of ricin, about a few grains of table salt in size, will kill a human being. Right. So a, pie, a pound of ricin, imagine 10 drones flying in with ricin that they all made in their backyard because all you need is some castor beans and some solvents mm -hmm. and a stove, and they deploy 10 pounds of ricin onto Angel Stadium. Even if it's only 10% effective for the 10 pounds, one pound of ricin could kill a quarter of a million people. Yeah, and that's that that that's absolutely that that that's uh, horrifying to even to even think about. I mean, speaking, I mean, like of, of stadiums, there was I don't know if you saw it. Uh, it was out today the uh, with the Super Bowl stadium uh, with the Super Bowl mm -hmm. is playing. Uh, they have been having they've been inundated with uh, drones. Of course they have been. <laughs> of you course, know. <laughs> because they are readily available off the shelf, and any nitwit can operate them because it doesn't require any skill, talent, or knowledge. It just requires a credit card. <laughs> to right. Buy and, one. right. I mean, and, and you know, and there is there. I believe there's there's something in place where you know you can't fly drones within this. I mean, that's obviously not working very well. If you tell you know, here's the law: you can't fly these things around here. But that's not well, stopping it, them, it's, obviously. Right. It's, it's a restriction. It's 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 not some some force field that you can't get into. Yes. You shall not fly these. I'm a pilot and I've flown all over the country. And we have we have airspace that's described for us that's restricted, prohibited, that we're not allowed to go into. Trust me, pilots journey into that airspace all the time mm -hmm. and they're licensed and trained. So you get Bob Johnson or Joe Turner who just went down to Best Buy and bought himself a DJI drone do you really think he's attending to those details? Right now, he's still. <laughs> no, he's not. No. And he will he will kill people just by accident. <laughs> right. Forget intentionality. Right. I mean, and that you know, for the, where they're, uh, I'm sorry, Mercedes Benz Stadium, uh, they're concerned. You know, if somebody loses control of a drone, it could go into the crowd. Um, and they're even citing terrorism is is also uh, the potential for terrorism is is also a concern. Um, Absolutely. And, and it, it should be. But uh, here we are. Like, do we, do we have no – we're indefensible against this. Anything, you <laughs> know, could happen. It's a terrible – I'm not happy that I wrote the story, and I am happy. It was just a moment in time where I was sitting at a Panera one evening with a buddy of mine, smoking cigars, you know, having <laughs> enjoying the good life. And it, and it was dark, and a drone flew over, and you saw the lights blinking, and my buddy goes – What's that? And I said, it's a drone. And he goes, well, that looks like fun. And I said, well, yeah, it would be. And all of a sudden, the entire story came to me. But what if? <laughs> you know, right. how would you defend yourself? Even if you hired a thousand uh, militia members to carry shotguns around, and that's in my novel as well, <laughs> and you're paying all these these yellow vest wearing militia men who really want to help America. Not only will they shoot down a drone that contains ricin or is full of full of C4, and when they shoot it, it explodes. It's going to dispense its horrible payload then. Or what if what if the poor shotgunner makes a mistake and shoots a citizen? This is that yeah. Is, that is in, that is inevitable as well. It's uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's scenario. yeah, just to sit back and to, to think about it, and you know, because we we see them all the time, and it's not uh, like you point, it's, it's not just airports. It uh, you know, it could be schools, it could be rush hour traffic in the middle of the highway, it could be anything that they want to disrupt our society, and they can do it with impunity. Because how are you going to find some guy that pulls into a vacant lot somewhere in his soccer mom minivan, the sunroof opens up, and the drone just rises up and flies away? Yeah, and, and then it, he drives a different direction. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, 
<laughs> it's it, yeah, it's I mean it, it's scary, and you know we don't even know what, what what could be you know out there, you know even just now because I mean yes, yes you thought of of it, and I'm sure other people have thought of it. Um, you know, people with bad intentions are trying to uh, make weapons out of anything, and right. our government, we don't, our military has no defense against this. We don't. Yes, uh, an F-18, an F-35, an F-22 cannot fight a drone traveling 20 miles an hour. Right. Yes. It, yes. At, right past it. Yeah, 200 feet above the ground. He's. They can't even fly that slow. So the it's it's a frightening scenario. And if you were to create a a, a striker carrying electronic EMS attacking energy men, and each one of these devices would cost twenty million dollars minimally. Mm-hmm. And you need, and they could only they could only surveil, uh, you know, a quarter of a mile radius. Let's say, how many would you need to protect New York City? Dozens. Yeah, that was, <laughs> I think more and than then, yeah. And then where would you, then what about all the other places in America? You're going to deploy a million of these twenty million dollar things in every city, dozens of them. Uh, no, it's it. There's a there's a challenge here that is not being acknowledged, and it. It isn't about a retaliation. It's about prevention from the beginning. We have, we have a constitution that grants us a lot of great rights and privileges that we are deserving of. But nowhere in the constitution, other than when it talks about the right to bear arms, does it articulate that we have the right to have drones. <laughs> and so right. just yeah. because we have the right doesn't mean we should do it. And when you cloud, when you confuse the airspace with drones that are civilian operated, safe, friendly drones and intermix that with hostile antagonistic drones, we have a very chaotic asynchronous status that nobody can uh, respond to. Right. Um, I mean, I I think I I read something. The only Thing I think uh, government isn't working with a lot of these or trying to work or working partly with uh, the companies that make some of these drones and they have some type of a program in there where they're not uh, supposed to be able to fly near things like stadiums. Right, um, it's, called, it's called geofencing. Yes, and it would take it would take me <laughs> mm-hmm. as a as a as a computer technologist. It would take me a weekend to reprogram that drone so that didn't matter. And the other side is. You know, the biggest manufacturer of drones that are used by is DJI. Do you know where they're made? Where would they be made? Uh, well, actually, I uh, I would probably get, uh, where would they be made? China. <laughs> China. China, China, yeah. Do, and do we trust China? You know, yeah. uh, you know you've, you've heard the stories. We've all heard the stories about we buy all these Chinese computers, and if they have bits of code embedded in, the, in each of the computers that could be networked together, creating a super network of, of chaos, that's not unrealistic. Imagine if the same thing happened with drones. It doesn't just because it has geofencing in it doesn't mean there's not going to be a way that China could say, well, I'm just really tired of Donald Trump uploads a revision to the unit and now it's going to do something else right the uh these are not these to to be supporting you know bad actors like that bringing that technology into the country is actually quite alarming to me it is (laughs) it is all right we are cutting it close on time i want to give you uh the last word any uh uh where are where people find uh you on social media with purchase your book and what anything exciting coming up I invite them to join me on at on Twitter at drone on one. It's D R O N E O N and the number one. I have I have almost seventy thousand active followers there, and they're great people. You can visit uh, my website at indefensible.org, and make sure you visit the movie website. There is a movie in development for Indefensible, so you can visit indefensibleproductions.com and. The book is readily available from Amazon and Kindle and paperback. And please read it and join me in the discussion. And it's something that we all have to pull together on uh, because I don't think we can rely on Nancy Pelosi and, and, and her band of merry people to solve this problem. 
No, no. Oh, it's, uh, quickly, speaking on that, I know uh, I saw something in the news as to where um, the drug cartels actually are using drones to find open spaces where where, where Border Patrol isn't so they can bring the drug drugs through. So, yeah, I think we, 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 we kind of do and we'll have a, a drone problem. So <laughs> yes, the pan the Pandora box is open. Yes. And we and as I say in my in my in my communication with my followers, I wrote in defensible to make sure that we are knowledgeable about this threat so we don't wake up one morning and be blindsided like we were on 9-11. Yes, definitely. We, got, we, we can't allow that to happen. No. Yep, we, we, we have to, I think we have to start thinking, uh, again, like you said, outside of Pandora's box and figure out how we can uh, keep ourselves and the people we care about safe. Well, I'll do my best. <laughs> and uh, I'll try on my end over here, so... Thank you, Alan. All right. Thank you very much, sir. You have a great day and uh, Happy New Year. Yes, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, everybody. We are going to take a quick break. Uh, we'll be right back with some last-minute news, what's going on tomorrow's show, and uh, any final thoughts. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> 